एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू आर हैंड्स ऑन पाइथन सेशन टूडे इज ऑल अबाउट गेटिंग स्टार्टेड विद गूगल को लैब यूजिंग इट फॉर एम एल मॉडल्स एंड प्लेइंग अराउंड विद इट्स कूल जेन ए आई फीचर्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फ्रस्ट्रेटिंग पार्ट्स ऑफ लर्निंग अ न्यू प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज और टेक्नोलॉजी इज सेटिंग अप द एनवायरमेंट इट कैन बी रियली टाइम कंज्यूमिंग एंड समटाइम्स इवन अ रोड ब्लॉक before you write your very first line of code but here is the good news when it comes to machine learning it's actually quite simple to get started you don't need to install anything locally thanks to google colab you can start writing and running python code straight from your browser just like that so today let's walk through how you can use google colab to run python code and explore machine learning without setting up anything on your own computer or downloading any jar file so before we start i'll give you the code which uh, you can download from github so go to this github repository uh, don't worry i will provide the link in the description of the video as well so you download multiple linear regression file and also the data set i have already downloaded and now we can start so now you open your browser so in my case it is google chrome and start typing colab i already have it in my history so i'm just using it colab dot research dot google dot com. When you see this, you already see some files which are in the pop up, which are which is shown to you, and these are the files which you recently created or visited. So this is a cool feature that you can start from where you left earlier. So here you have different options. you have google drive you have github you have upload so for this example we will use the downloaded files which which you just downloaded so i'll go to upload browse and i'll pick up this monthly spans multiple nonlinear regression file so we will wait for it to load i can see the file loaded to my system and similarly you will also see that you know this file is loaded to your system then you can click on uh, these three lines with three dots a table of content and we can click on this folder we'll wait for the upload option to come when you click on upload you just upload your data set file now we have successfully uploaded data set file so this is my notebook and which i have uploaded to google colab here you see code option plus code and plus text so essentially notebooks have two cells one is code to write your code your python code and another is text cells which is to write explanations and instructions and uh, when you will be developing the models right you will be writing uh, using this text file to write your observations mostly so then we can see i think i'll try to create one code file here so you hover your uh, cursor to the boundary of any cell so suppose if i come here i can see two buttons displayed one is code and one text so i'll click on code you see one code cell is created 
if you want to delete it you can go here and you delete this cell so i delete it yeah so uh, the coolest feature of uh, google collab is that it has inbuilt gen ai so you can ask uh, gen ai to create code or to write code for you so for an example first i will create a code cell and when i create a code cell you see the generate button here so when you click on this generate it will open a text box where you can write and you can ask it to write code for you so for an example i would write i want to create a linear regression model can you provide the code for libraries to import and you just enter after writing your prompt and you see that google collab has created the import statements for me and if you compare these two import statements with the imports of what i had for this working example they are almost similar so this is the coolest feature of google collab i think we can try a few more so i'll delete this for now i'll delete what we just created so let me create another code we can generate another thing okay before that let me just run this example where i'm importing the libraries to read the data and this i have i have simple example of monthly expenses so i'm running this i'm loading this now i've loaded the monthly expenses and then i'm creating a copy of monthly expenses because i don't want to spoil the data what what is there in the data sheet and here if you run it so i'm displaying the top five records of this data set so another example we can see here i'm writing it here i like suppose i want to see the top 10 records of this data set and i don't know what code to write i can simply ask write code to display the top 10 rows of the sample data yeah so it's very simple you need to just change the data head to 10 i think this is not needed i'll just simply run this yeah so you got top 10 records you can actually write a bit complex logic as well so let me again do the same thing and i will ask now google collab to write some complex logic so write code to create a column to display the difference between family size and num children i think we can give the exact names and add it to data i think before i run this example i just want to give a bit brief on this data so this is a monthly expense data of families and we have main fields like family size monthly income number of children location type has car education level dining out and monthly expenses so when i look at the family size and i also have number of children here so i'm just curious to know the number of adults in the family and that's the reason i'm asking okay write the code to create a column to display the difference between family size and number of children 
and I would expect a uh, number of adults in each family. I'll just again I'll write the prompt and enter, and he has written code for me. I can execute it, and now if I again run. So this is another feature of this that you know it suggests you the code what you are thinking to write. So yeah, I want to write head and probably ten, and that's what I want to see that you know whether I have get yes I have got another field here, other dependents. So that's the difference between family size and children. So this is another cool feature of. Google Colab. You can also create a new notebook from it, and I will simply go here. I will start from fresh, just to give a feeling of it. So you got uh, the prompt again. You go down left side, and you see a new notebook button here. You just click on it. And this will create a new notebook file for you. Yep, it has created a new notebook file for you. You can again start writing. Suppose I want to write, print, hello AI world. You can save the file like this, and that saves you the file with the hello world name. There are some more features of uh, Google Colab which are important. So you have also the runtime you can run all the cells together. I mean the way let me show you the old file what we were using. So, so now you have multiple cells here right. If you want to run all of them together you can go here you can run all. Right. Then uh, there is a change runtime, so runtime type as well. So you have three here: CPU, GPU, and TPU. So CPU is the standard processor in every computer, and it works like fine for general purpose tasks like running web websites, editing documents, or writing small Python programs. However, it's slower for the training uh, your ML models, especially deep learning. Uh, then you have GPU. So GPU were created uh, to render graphics in games, but now they are uh, slowly and widely used in machine learning because uh, they can handle many calculations at once. So they are perfect for training models on large data sets, and these are good for deep learning, uh, training neural networks like CNN, RNNs, and transformers, and metric operations as well. Then you have TPU. Uh, they are basically custom built by Google and specifically for TensorFlow based machine learning tasks. So they are faster than GPUs for some types of models, especially deep learning with the large data sites. And the another cool feature of uh, Google Colab is that you know you can use it like Google Docs. So multiple people can work and collaborate uh, to work on same notebook. And uh, last but not the least is uh, your revision history. So, like, suppose if you lost your, you know, uh, like if you want your old changes to be reflected, then you can get your uh, changes from the revision history. Thanks for joining today. Next Sunday, we will explore how to perform EDA, exploratory data analysis with Python.